VNC is another means of remote access. It is not built into Windows, but may be freely downloaded from a third party. The next type of uh, remote connectivity we'll look at is a third party application. It's not built into Windows, but this is a program called VNC, and it's available for both uh, Linux and Windows. It's, there's a free version and there are paid versions with more bells and whistles. But in this example, we'll just use the free version, since it won't cost you anything to try it out. All right, so I'll just go to Google and I could simply type in VNC. The company's real VNC, so I'll go to their website. Let's go to downloads and notice there are multiple versions here. There's Enterprise Edition, Personal Edition, and Free Edition. Enterprise, of course, has all the bells and whistles, but you have to buy it. Personal Edition has more bells and whistles, but you still have to buy it. Free Edition is pretty basic, just allows a very dry, basic uh, remote connection but it will do what we want and it will let you kind of get a feel for VNC and you know see how you like it. So let's download that free tool and you want to fill out your information here but I'm just going to proceed to the download page and there are several options you can download depending on your operating system if you want to get it for Linux or different versions of uh, in this case I want Windows and I want to get both the server and the client. My options are zip archive and executable I'll grab the executable the exe file so I don't have to worry about having WinZip in case you don't have that. I'll download it. Oops, let me agree to the statement there and I'll throw it on the desktop. Not a big download, less than a megabyte. And it's a pretty, pretty useful, robust remote connectivity tool. So there's both a server and a client part and I'm going to install both. Just double click on the exe executable file to run it. Go to user account control, next, accept the agreement, next, go with the default install. I want to install both the server and the viewer, a full installation. I'll just leave it with the default, real VNC. And my options here, I can, I'm going to go ahead and create a VNC viewer desktop icon, that'll be fun. And if I run it as a service, then I'll have to reboot the computer and it'll start automatically every time I boot. A lot of people don't want that, they like to you know, it's more secure if you set it up so that you have to run it manually. And that way, if you forget about it, nobody's going to be able to connect to your computer using VNC unless you explicitly click on the Run VNC Server and User Mode icon and, and actually run the service. And that's kind of my personal preference. I, I usually untick these. But if you want, go with the defaults and make it automatic. Whatever you prefer. I'm going to click Next and Install. And I'll go through the Install Routine and I click Finish. And I'm done with this. And so I can go ahead and delete it, throw it into the recycle bin. And here's my viewer. So that I don't really have to configure anything here. I just have to know the IP address of someone running a VNC server. But I do need to configure the server if I'm going to run it to allow someone to connect to my computer via VNC. So I click on Real VNC and I go to VNC Server for User Mode. And I just want to click on. Um, I can go ahead and run it or I can go ahead and click on configure user mode settings. I'm going to do that first. And so one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to configure a password. Can't connect without a password, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, set that password up. And notice you can choose to prompt the local user to accept connection. So if that would be an extra protective measure if you wanted to take it, and that way it would prompt you. And if you didn't trust that person, you just you opt out, you decline, and you, they won't be allowed to connect. You can specify connections and inputs. There are several settings here that you might want to browse through. Um, poll for changes to desktop. Now, some of these settings will give you better response time as far as remotely viewing a computer, but remember you'll also generate more traffic. So I, if I use you know, VNC hooks to track changes, that's one method. If I use poll changes for desktop, you can kind of play with that and maybe tweak the settings. Um, another way to kind of cut down on the amount of bandwidth that you're consuming with all your remote viewing would be that you could simply tell it to remove and not send the wallpaper, remove a background pattern, disable user interface effects. That could slow things down considerably when you remotely view on a desktop. So maybe you want to that's up to you. You know, you can kind of figure out what your preferences are. But I'm going to go with the defaults in this case. So I'm going to click on OK. And I still haven't launched the server yet. I just configured it. So I'm going to go back to user mode. And I'm going to run VNC server. And when I do that, notice it appears. So I have an icon here. 
there's my IP address what I'm listening on 129.222.50.102 and if I wanted to I could click and reset my password or change options or something like that don't need to but just showing you that you can so I'm over here now and I'm listening for a connection to be connected to 129.222.50.102 and this is a server Starbucks let's go over to the client Galactica and we'll see if we can't log in and remotely view and control our computer Starbucks running the VNC server. Now that we've set up our VNC server Starbucks, let's connect to it from our VNC client Galactica. I was previously on Starbucks and now I'm on the Galactica. We set up the VNC server, now we want to use the VNC viewer on the other computer to remotely connect to and control or remotely control that computer. So I just need the IP address or the host name, either one, as well. make sure DNS is working if you use a host name. I'm going to use the IP, I click on OK, I need to enter the password, and of all the methods we've used so far, this is one of my favorite means of remote access and control. I like it better than the built-in Windows methods, honestly, but I'll notice, again, you know, just as if I were using remote desktop protocol, or just as if I were using a remote assistance invitation, I can remotely control the computer and do anything I want. In addition, the person, um, the server, the person who's running the server, they can see everything I'm doing. And we can actually share the mouse and the keyboard. We can collaborate and do things together if we want. So that's kind of a cool thing about VNC. Whereas, you know, think about RDP with Windows, when you log in, that person is forced to log out. Um, you know, this would be more comparable to a remote assistance invitation than an RDP connection in Windows, because what you know, also with a remote assistance invitation, you know, uh, the user could also share control of the mouse and keyboard and see what you're doing. But that's the way it is with VNC. But I think you know, VNC is a lot smaller. It's less bloated. It's it's a lot tighter. Not bad for a client and server that are less than a megabyte.